Some new tech for the ski slopes. Welcome back to Textonation. I'm Fred Fishkin. Joining us from CES is the co-founder and CEO of E Outdoor Swiss, Nicola Colombo. Hi, Hi everyone. Great, great to see you. And you're showing a product that you're calling Eskimo or Eskimo. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. Tell me about yes, it. Yes, it's actually Eskimo. Stands for Electric Ski Mountaineering. Well. You're holding it in your hand for those of you who are watching here. So give us an overview. First of all, a little background about the company and what it is that you're doing. Yes, we are actually a Swiss, uh, Swiss based startup. We are located in a, in a, in a town called San Bernardino, not in California, but in Switzerland. Uh, and three years ago, we embarked into this uh, uh, innovation uh, to create basically the first electrically assisted ski. Following let's say, the, the path of the e-bikes, we wanted to bring a technology that can help uh, the skiers going uphill during the ski mountaineering or ski touring. So what the, uh, what the product does, it provides assistance to this traction belt. It provides assistance to go uphill. And uh, this is actually a motor, an electric motor. On the top, you have a battery. And this, it's actually rotating through the motor. It's uh, actuated automatically with sensors and an IMU uh, platform that detect and sense the movement. And every time you do a step uh, forward, this is actually activated and helps you move ahead. When you get on the top of the slope, you, in 30 seconds, you basically remove the battery, the motor and the belt, and you have this key configured for downhill. You put everything in the backpack. Now my backpack is empty because everything is... Uh, set up for the uphill and you can descend with no compromise so the ski for the descent it's a ski that you can use exactly as a traditional ski so you have the assistance on the uphill but then no compromise for the descent because everything goes in your backpack it's not that uh, heavy and you can then ski for your uh, downhill uh, experience Amazing. So the, the skis are specially designed for this to fit on them then? These... Absolutely. Absolutely. The ski has basically, as a, the main difference uh, uh, com comparing to a traditional ski, you see here there is a little hole, which is uh, where the, uh, the belt uh, goes through. When, you rem when we remove the belt, the belt basically has a, a fast uh, connector that, you, uh, that is uh, required to remove the belt. And then there is a sliding uh, cover that basically cover the hole and then the surface become even and you actually as I said before you have the exact same performance as a downhill ski. Tell me about how this came about. Well the story it's pretty uh, pretty simple. I went up uh, I, I myself like to do ski touring. I went up uh, uh, one day for a nice tour and I invited some friends actually some of my e-bike friends they said, let's go try, uh, try for a ski touring. After half an hour, they said, hey, come on. I want to take the cable car. It's too, I mean, it's too demanding physically to go uphill. And I was like, come on, come on, come with me. Because when you reach the top, it's so enjoy, you know, you get so much joy when you reach the top and then you can enjoy the descent. But that, you know, at the end of the day, then uh, this triggered me an idea. And I said, why not bring in some kind of support for the people that cannot practice ski touring you know, several uh, days per week and maintain the fitness level to do a lot of this uh, uphill effort. So from that idea, I actually uh, drafted the first patent and then uh, we incorporated the startup uh, and, and we've been on the slopes night and day for the last uh, couple of years to bring this product from a, a prototype concept to a, a pre-production level where it is now. The, cha the technical challenges are quite significant because you are bringing a technology on a very extreme environment, you know, the cold, the ice, the water. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, uh, challenges from that uh, respect. And now we have a very, uh, very stable and very uh, ready to scale up product. But so what you, you, mentioned, you mentioned some of those challenges and obviously batteries don't like the cold motors don't like the, the water. And so tell me how you were able to overcome all of these challenges. Yeah, that's uh, uh, what we did. It's uh, we use uh, our 
quite intense discharge frequency, but the actuation of the motor, it's uh, only for a few seconds, right? Because you do one step and then the other ski uh, switch on. So with this constant actuation of the motor, uh, the battery uh, basically uh, generates as well some heat. So that, produce, that makes them uh, working on an optimal environment. Same for the motor, actually on the motor itself, we even have the opposite product of uh, overheating in certain uh, very steep uh, descents. So the thermal management is not only on the extreme cold, but it's also on the extreme hot because uh, power units can generate a lot of heats when they are under stress. So we basically optimize and find, uh, finding the compromise to reuse the heat, not to dissipate the heat too much, the one produced by using it, but at the same time also providing the batteries uh, an environment and, um, and, a, and a cover that uh, protect from the extreme icing uh, conditions. Well, you mentioned you've been out there testing it, improving it for the last couple of years. So what can you tell us about what the user experience will be like, how much usage they can get out of it in, in, a, in, a, typical, uh, in a typical day? Our, um, our user, our, let's say, uh, target uh, consumer, it's uh, uh, skiers who likes to try the ski touring, but they are not uh, uh, ready to do, let's say, 3,000 feet uphill because uh, it's at the beginning. Um, so they want to experience a safe environment to do uh, ski touring, maybe on a market trail. And with this, uh, with this device, compared to a traditional ski touring, you can do up, up to four times more the vertical speed per hour. Yes. So uh, that basically gives you with, a, um, with enough range to reach a good summit and enjoy a very good descent of two, 3,000 uh, feet uh, descent. And then eventually have enough battery to do a second lap and do your second ride of the day. Interesting. There might be people who would be inclined to say, hey, can I use those just to kind of cross-country ski, but even though they're not cross-country skis, but could it be used yeah. that way? Yeah, that's uh, on the flat. It's also working uh, to, it gives you much more uh, performances and speed. Uh, but obviously, uh, if you only go on the flat, then you don't have the, the enjoyment of the descent, but definitely the system works very well also on, on a kind of flattish surface, flattish terrain. Interesting. So there are a lot of variables involved, how steep a hill or mountain would be and the, the weight of the of the skier, all of that would come into play, I guess. With the Absolutely. The, the technology, the algorithm that, uh, that we have and all the sensors, they actually detect the length of the step, obviously, before starting in the app, you can set up uh, the height and the weight of the of the skier. But then there is a calibration in the first steps. The system learn how the how the skier moves, how long are the steps, and also learn from the terrain what is the slip factor and basically the lever torque based on the slip factor. So there is a continuous calculation that determine what is the slip factor to provide the smoother possible traction when you go uh, uphill based on uh, steepness, based on traction. So because there's no conditions can vary a lot. Even within the same uh, tour, you can encounter fresh powder, you can encounter icy conditions. So all of those, that's why a lot of data has been produced to optimize our algo. And the more we will, uh, the more uh, devices will be on the use, the more uh, fine tuned it will be. Just terrific. So people seeing this are going to wonder, okay, so when can I buy that? And about how much might it cost? What can you tell us? Yes, that's, uh, I mean, our company, you know, we are a producer of all the hardware that goes on the ski. The ski, the current ski has been produced together with our technical partner, which is uh, Blizzard Nordica. It's a leading ski manufacturer. Our uh, goal is to be a business to business company. We sell it to the brand. We now already have quite a few brands interested in considering go to market with a, a Eskimo powered ski with their own brand. Uh, the target would be to have those uh, on retails from uh, the next winter season, which is the uh, end of 25. Price wise, uh, as opposed to a standard ski, uh, we did probably add on top of that about 1,000 to 1,500. Uh, 
US dollar on top. Depending on the version of the battery, we have two battery capacity, uh, small and uh, let's say extended, and, uh, and there will be a few variation on that. But the ultimate price will be defined by the, the schema, the ski brand itself. And how much weight is going to be in that backpack? Because you're just be going to be disconnecting two of the motors and, uh, and yeah, two of the batteries. A, uh, our target is to be a bit uh, over than uh, three kilos, so six pounds about uh, that we go on your backpack. That's, that's not too bad at all, is it? No. I mean, for an adult, it's not too bad. Of course, maybe for a, child, for a teenager, it might be, you know, um, a bit of weight, but we are also confident that uh, as the product evolves, we'll be able also to create uh, even a, a lighter version as well. Very but interesting. Also to, the, to the energy, you know, now the biggest part of the weight is on the energy storage. So as the, the chemistry of the batteries evolve, we will be able to provide same energy for a fraction of the, uh, of the volume and the weight. And how long would a recharge take? Uh, with a, it depends which charger um, uh, you use. If you use a, a, a fast charge, it will be about, uh, about an hour. So if you use maybe a, a standard charger of two amperes, uh, it might be uh, up to two hours, two and a half hours. But normally what we want to achieve is that we give you enough power for your day out, which is about three hours of, uh, of range then uh, you easily and uh, comfortably charge it back at home. When you get home, you charge it overnight and then, uh, uh, and then you're ready to go. There will be also a different use case for rentals that may actually use it more intensively. They can rent it out maybe uh, for the entire day. And in that case, every time they, they receive back uh, the ski after the rental, each rental session, they can swap the batteries and give a, a fully charged battery back to the renter. So the battery can be swapped out. And if somebody wanted to, I suppose they could carry an extra battery in the backpack. Absolutely. One of the models is that uh, we, we have also a slimmer battery. So it's out the way. In this way, maybe the user, whenever they do a short tour of one hour, one hour and a half, they just carry one. But then let's say on Sunday, you have the full day, you carry the extra, uh, the extra battery and you can do a, a longer ride. And one of these days there'll be a solar version too, where you got a solar <laughs> panel on your backpack. <laughs> that might be, yeah, a bit of uh, a bit of energy also from there, or even on the ski. Just terrific. For more info, where can people go? We we have a website uh, which is e schemoswiss uh, You can also follow on our social on Instagram e schemo. Uh, it's uh, it's our uh, um, it's our Instagram page. So uh, users can, uh, can follow us, especially if they visit our website, they can uh, register. We are gonna have already in, uh, in this season, we are gonna run some uh, test days. Majority will be in, uh, in Europe where uh, people who has registered, they can come over and test it on their own for free. Uh, so we, we start engage with the end consumers. We are also planning to come over to Utah end of March so there might be also something for uh, North America as well. Oh, very exciting. End of March in Utah. Yeah. Terrific. So for more info, once again, it's E, is it hyphen? E-schemo.swiss. E-schemo, S-K-I-M-O dot Swiss. Nicola Colombo, thank you so much for spending time with us. Thank you. Thank you very much for hosting this.